Dan, you and I attended uh, IBM's AI and Research Day in Yorktown, uh, New York. And I don't know, there may have been 20, 25 industry analysts there. Uh, a lot of uh, two, two L1s uh, were there. Uh, Rob Thomas and Dario Gill, uh, who runs uh, research. And, and obviously, um, Rob runs the commercial side of the entire house. I have to say, you know, I hate to be fanboyish, Dan. Uh, and and I don't applaud everything, but I think they absolutely knocked it out of the park for enterprise AI, right? And um, what I was most impressed about was their articulation of their client, uh, um, the way that they see this playing out, what their client needs are, where they're starting in the journey uh, to solve all of this, uh, and real customers. OK, now that was the public side. We can't talk about the embargoed or, or NDA side. They didn't they are going to make a lot of announcements coming up. And, and we were pre-briefed on that. But I want to stick to the I want to stick to the public stuff. Um, uh, first off, um, IBM is a company that, was you know, AI was an adder to AI being uh, the business. OK, and I know a lot of people are talking like that, but I'm convinced that IBM turned the entire company uh, upside down, uh, not not when it happened, but when Arvind started, right? Arvind was very clear. He's like, this company is going to be a hybrid cloud and AI company. And I remember thinking, okay, totally get this was before generative AI uh, uh, popped on everybody's radar. This, uh, So I'm like, hybrid cloud, I get, but AI for IBM? So uh, to make a long story longer, uh, they had made, uh, you know, they've made hundreds and millions of dollars uh, of, of investment. Uh, they've made $500 million uh, venture fund for enterprise uh, AI. Uh, they've gone GA. They were the first to GA, not true true GA, not fake GA, uh, as, as we see with multiple feature sets and multiple countries on the AI side and then the data side. And uh, governance uh, is is coming up there, but um, yeah, a really good explanation of, of 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 all of that. And it was not like limited. It's not, hey, this is in theory. This was we are working with clients to call uh, to to solve uh, customer facing function and experience problems, HR, finance, and supply chain, IT development and operations, uh, core business operations and then putting real numbers now i haven't tested these numbers i haven't talked to these customers on numbers haven't you know run this in in my lab or or, or your lab but the the output uh is is staggering and by the way it's something you and i have holistically believed in the opportunity but you know reducing costs per invoice by up to 50 percent reducing application support tickets by 70 percent Automating answers with 95% accuracy in customer service, reducing content creation costs up to up to 40%. This is classic IBM focusing on the enterprise. And I got to tell you, I, I the one thing I have to learn more about Dan is is when it comes to Watson, which I like Rob Thomas's explanation of it being the AI, uh, the IDE for for AI was a good one. And it said they're the only one that can do on-prem and public cloud. I need to learn. I need to research more about on-prem uh, and how they're deploying this uh, with companies like Dell, that not only in data centers, but also on the edge. It, it's the end-to-end -end stack, Dan, that I've been looking for uh, forever. VMware broached it with uh, private AI, and I was all excited about this. Uh, but I just didn't get enough details. Uh, out of it. And I think IBM has definitely figured out uh, different elements. I need to do more research uh, on it, which, by the way, could could put IBM, you know, again, in another uh, leadership uh, zone um, of itself being end to end. Yeah, I mean, look, first of all, this was a great event. Um, some of the best slideware I've seen. And if you want to check out some more of that, at least the publicly available parts of it, uh, posted on my on my Twitter um, X. Do I have to call it X? Is that a thing? No, I'm I rarely call it X. Okay. You don't have to either. I mean, 
bringing XE anything, back. Yeah. But look, I um, I, I thought there were some great one-liners and quips. You know, the nutrition label for AI. You know, governance. I think right now we're all about yeah. building. Um, you know, we're all about uh, productivity and all about efficiency. But governance is going to be where a lot of the wars want for companies that want to compete. And in the enterprise space, you know, hearing about you know chief legal officers and basically being incredible roadblocks for companies implementing generative AI because trust. It's trust, it's safety, it's privacy, there's huge risk, um, get it wrong. Um, and then of course, culture, the ability for companies to implement this in a way that upskills its personnel and concurrently uh, takes advantage of value that can be created quickly. But Pat, I'll tell you something else. This was probably some of the best material as it pertains to use case and customer value. So yes. they had the consulting team come in. I mean, Rob Thomas probably showed five or six slides of very specific in-depth work and what the returns are in their areas like digital labor and areas like supply chain where you're seeing 20, 30, 40% um, of value, in incremental value improvements, whether that's cost reductions, whether that's productivity gains, doing the measurements, doing the testing, doing the validation. And to your point, I know we haven't done this testing yet, but the methodology seemed to be comprehensive and it seemed to be well thought out. And now the question I'm asking is, well, if the numbers are so good, why doesn't everyone run down the path immediately? And, you know, I asked that question. I think it'll. Yeah, you know, it was a good question. It was on the record and it'll come back out. But, you know, the, the answer in short was it's a slow move to get culture. It's a slow move to get budget. And despite the fact that, you know, we think that once it's obvious everyone would do it, it still has um, it still has some selling to do inside of companies and you know the allocation of budget. I like those numbers, the six to sixteen percent of spend, roughly of, yeah. of sorry, revenue is spent on IT. I think AI is gonna force that number upward more substantially if companies want to be able to compete with the capabilities of generative AI. But there was just a ton of depth there, Pat. And you know, one of the some of the best presentations, unfortunately, we can't really talk about um, some of the you know the vision around quantum. But I, I think broadly, we can say IBM showed a very impressive vision there, and I look forward to uh, that being. I think they have a research day that'll come up public, you know, on quantum. So you all have to wait on that. But um, Pat, I thought it was a great for analysts event where they really did a good job, maybe the best job I've seen IBM do with business value and use case. Meaning it wasn't just, especially at a research event. Exactly. Like for me, I get like, you know, my usually after the first segment, I get glossy eyed at some of these when they start getting too into the technical weeds, but even just showing some of the code capabilities, like just some of the stuff it can do to enable someone to take code and update it to different code using its generative capabilities, all grounded, all governed, so I'm not a, I'm not going to say fanboy, but I'm going to say uh, a significant uptick in the quality of an event like this. And by the way, uh, great stable of, of, of analysts. They kept the numbers small. They kept the executive interactions high and uh, look for our six five episode to come out because uh, we got the exclusive with the with the two uh, L1s that were there. And so you'll be hearing what could be shared more in depth from Dario and Rob Thomas uh probably in the next couple of days right yep absolutely uh great analysis dan rock and roll uh, and i i <laughs> it, it really is ibm's to lose here right they've got to continue executing they have to continue uh doing first uh, sales and marketing is is paramount some of the some of the comments i can't share uh that that rob used i've loved i mean there is a cultural shift here at ibm and i know everybody talks about it but this is reality. I can feel it. I can tell you as an analyst that that is it, it is real. Arvin is a, just a completely different leader uh, and leads in a different way. And his team, he's brought in an all-star team to make it happen. 